Okay. So what is mapping is the question. And we're going to learn how to try to make maps. So I guess that means we're mapping. Um, but I'd like to ask, what are we looking at right now? And you'll say, okay, that's the Earth. And, well, maybe that's true. That is the Earth. But really, what is it? It's really a picture of the Earth, right? This is a famous picture of the Earth that was taken from uh, the Apollo 11 mission to the moon. So it's interesting because it was one of the first pictures taken of the Earth by a person. Is it a map? That's the next question. So now the question is, what is this? And you're getting a little more clever. You're saying, okay, Ben, don't try to trick me. This is, this is Google Earth. Well, it's a trick question because this is actually still a picture. It's a, it's a screenshot of Google Earth. It's not the actual program itself. You'd have to download that. So now I'm going to ask you, what is this? And you're starting to get frustrated because you know I'm trying to trick you. And that's okay because this is a meaningless blob, right? Maybe I spilled my coffee on the table. But what does it mean to you now? And I hope you can say, okay, well, that's Japan. And the point I'm trying to drive home here is that we look at data and data are just shapes. They are lines or polygons or points or pictures, um, images. And that's how we represent the earth. So is this a map? And again, if you think it is, then, you know, that's okay. Um, let's move on. Um, I'll tell you that this is again, an image, um, of the earth. It's the Beijing airport. And why did I show you this image? Well, this is one piece of data. We see pixels here. We see gray pixels. Um, if we were to zoom in, we'd see the actual squares of the pixels. But the point is, is that it takes a human being to, to extract kind of purpose from this image. And so one thing I'll tell you is that as maps are completely subjective. They are exactly what we make of them and nothing more. Data is just whatever we think it means. And that's a huge, huge piece. This is probably an image that you recognize much more easily. This is, of course, New York, Manhattan. Um, again, the patterns on the landscape, if we were to turn this into data from a picture, we might draw the coastline, right? In order to make data like that, though, we have to, we have to use GIS which means geographic information systems. And GIS is a way of managing this type of spatial data to get to answer questions. So here's an example. Um, here, all of the buildings have been highlighted from uh, an aerial image. And if we were to take the aerial image away, we're left with just building data. So this is uh, data that represents every place that there is a building and the white places are locations that do not have a building. The real question is, what is mapping? Because that's kind of the, the title of the video. And mapping, I'd like to um, kind of suggest, is the idea that we take layers of data and make them into something meaningful to people. So here's something I would call a map. And this is a map I made when I went to Mongolia. Um, and it looks pretty simple. Um, what I'll tell you right now is that it's uh, the landscape with the IMAG or province boundaries on top of it. Now, why is this a map and the other one wasn't a map? Well, what this is, is it shows us kind of a feeling for the landscape, um, mountains, a little bit of kind of land cover, what we assume is maybe forest um, with steppes and grassland leading down to the Gobi Desert. And then on top of that, we get to see where um, each province kind of partakes in this landscape. Uh, with lakes on top as well. So although this isn't a very complex map, it still, I would say, is a map because it uses layers to convey a purpose. Um, so when I'm describing Mongolia to people, I like to use this map to describe the landscape, and it's more effective than just an aerial image. The question is, how many layers are in this map? Um, you might say, okay, well, two. You know, there's the mountains and... Or maybe you think three, there's mountains, the lakes, and the, the IMAC boundaries. Well, there are actually seven. One of the layers is, is elevation and color representing elevation from low being kind of more of a desert feel 
um, through forest to high, which follows the patterns of the landscape from the data I got. And then another one would be something called a hillshade. I don't know if you can see how these mountains in here look kind of mountainous. They have a, a ruffle to them. And there are actually three different hillshades working together in this one map. So that's one, two, three, four. Three hillshades, one what we call hypsometric tint, which just means color um, for elevation. The other thing I put on this map was uh, vegetation cover. So there are some places down in the lower elevations that still have forest and uh, a couple of different types of steppe uh, or grassland. The other layer um, would be the lakes. And so the lakes I had to put on top of these other layers, but I put the lakes underneath the final layer, which was hollow IMAG boundaries, meaning you can see through each IMAG and only the boundaries are visible. Now, if I wanted to get even more fancy and informative, I would probably add an eighth layer, which would be the labels of all of these, um, these IMAGs or provinces. And then even more, maybe I would add a ninth layer that would be the locations of all of their capitals. And then maybe a 10th layer would be the labels of all those capitals. It takes a lot to make a good map and it's not as easy as it seems. I would like to try to go forward with the idea that mapping is using geographic information systems, which is analytic and problem solving types of skills. What you end up doing with that is that it's, it's more like Excel or a spreadsheet type of work, right? You are managing data, you're asking questions with the data, you're making summaries, um, but it all is just in the computer and the computer will spit out whatever you tell it to do. You have to be smart about it. Cartography or map making is more kind of design oriented and synthetic. It's how you make things look pretty. Um, you know, the equivalent would be making pie charts or scatter plots or, um, you know, rep writing reports and making visuals for reports. And the two metaphors I use most often with kind of GIS and cartography is um, GIS is kind of like building things. It's, it's like making a structure. Um, you have your data, which is kind of like the material, and then you've got tools and the tools allow you to interact with the data to construct kind of an argument. You know, where do you want to put a fire station? Well, you've got to use tools and geographic data to figure out where the best place is. Cartography is more like painting. You can make a map look like anything you want, but people trust maps, perhaps beyond the amount that they should. Um, Maps are distortions of the earth. They are representations of the earth, just like a pie chart is a representation of your data. Um, whatever you put in the spreadsheet, you can make any color, any size, any proportion, any style that you want. So try to work within this framework, um, you know, try to keep this in mind, and this is how I'm gonna be thinking about it. So I hope you do too. Uh, thanks for making it through the video. We'll uh, see you in the next one.